about to see The world in action What we can be Life with no distractions We'll get away This is what we waited for Hello and welcome back to my channel So here is the slow cook video That I have been promising you guys For a good few weeks now uh, bearing in mind it has been filmed over the last few weeks before we had a shortage on all of our ingredients so this was all filmed prior to panic buying but I did ask everyone's opinion on uploading food videos and the majority of you would like to see them so I've done two slow cooker videos before and they took a little bit more prep and a lot more ingredients like from scratch this is more open some packets chop a few veg <laughs> bung it in and turn it on which let's face it are some of the best meals aren't they and there is also one in there that isn't a meal it's actually a cake stroke bread amazing three ingredients it, just wait until you see it it will blow your mind honestly it is yeah I didn't believe it until I tried it and then I tried it and now I'm converted and this is all we eat <laughs> all the time so I hope everybody is doing okay and thank you all for all your lovely wonderful messages that I've been getting and um, I just want to say that I said reach out if you wanted some comfort or someone to talk to um, for, like for your guys benefit and I didn't actually realise how much it was going to benefit me. It really takes my mind off things, so it, it has definitely backfired in a good way. That not only am I chatting to you guys and you feel like you've got someone who listens, it really is helping me. And it really is nice to get a perspective from the entire world. Because I've got people that are in Italy on lockdown at the moment that are messaging. There's people in Australia, people from China. Like, it's literally crazy the amount of people that are messaging from all these different countries. There's someone was messaging from the Caribbean the other day. So I'm absolutely loving hearing from you all and we're chatting together, which is nice. So without further ado, I'm gonna stop rambling and actually get into the video. So the first meal I'm gonna make is a chicken and chorizo stew. This is really simple and hopefully you can get the ingredients for this at the moment as well. I've actually doubled up on this recipe because we had Steve's mum over for dinner so this serves eight. So I've got 200 grams of chorizo and I'm just going to chop the end off and then peel it. It's got like a papery skin and if you leave that on it'll be really tough and horrible. So you just peel that off and then chop it into slices. I'll make sure I write down all the quantities and recipes down in the description box which is just below this video. If you click on the little arrow it will take you straight into there and you'll be able to see exactly the amounts of things that I used. So when you've chopped up your chorizo you want to get a really hot pan and put it in there dry. You don't need any oil because I will show you the amount of oil that comes out of the sausage is plenty and you want to keep that oil as well because it's all the flavour. I know someone's going to point it out that you actually say chorizo, not chorizo. I cannot get my head round it, so I'm going to call it chorizo for the purpose of the video. So once your chorizo starts to brown, you're going to want to add two chopped cloves of garlic into the oil and give it about another five minutes just so that the flavours all meld together. Next up, I've just got 900 grams of baby potatoes that I've just given a good scrub and chopped in half. To this, you're going to add four peeled and chopped carrots. I've used an 800 gram pack of skinless and boneless chicken thighs. I've just chopped these into fairly large pieces and popped them on top of the carrots. Next up, you wanna add your chorizo and garlic mix, making sure to scrape every last bit of oil out of the pan because that's where a lot of your flavor is going to come from. I add a tin of plum tomatoes and then I rinse out the tin with half a tin of water. I've added two chicken stock pots, although you could use stock cubes if that's what you've got in instead. On top of this, I'm going to put three good tablespoons of smoked paprika and some salt and pepper for seasoning. And lastly, I'm going to give two big squeezes of tomato puree. It probably works out about two tablespoons worth and then give it a good mix round. A good tip I've picked up is to actually heat your slow cooker whilst you're preparing your ingredients. It helps things cook a little bit better and the flavours are better if you put them into a warm slow cooker. Also make sure your potatoes are kind of buried a little bit before you put the lid on. And then I just cook this on low for 6 hours. So once your 6 hours are up your stew should be fully cooked and what I'm going to do now is just add a cornflour slurry. So just a couple of teaspoons of cornflour, you can get it in most supermarkets, home bargains, places like that. A couple of teaspoons of water and then just tip it into your pan and stir it round and I'd give it another 5 minutes to cook through and it will thicken it lovely and give it a really nice sort of creamy texture. 
and I just serve this in our little grey bowls with some nice warm crusty bloomer bread. It's a really filling warm and hearty meal but it doesn't take very much prep at all. So this next recipe is the one that absolutely blew my mind. All you need is the leftover bananas that everyone has in their fruit bowl, some flour and a tin of condensed milk. Now what I do whenever I get bananas and they go a little bit brown is I peel them put them in a freezer bag and put them in the freezer, hence why all these are different colours. And then I save them and I use them in things like this or smoothies. So literally for this all you need to do is put your bananas in a bowl, add your condensed milk and your flour and mix it all together. Then you want to spray some oil in your slow cooker and put it on the highest setting and then pour your batter into your slow cooker and leave it for two and a half hours. At the end of the two and a half hours I just inserted a skewer to make sure that it came out clean. That meant that my bread was completely cooked. And then I just left it to completely cool before I took it out of the slow cooker. Now I made a mammoth bread and I doubled the recipe. So the original recipe is five bananas, one tin of condensed milk and 320 grams or two and a half cups of self-raising flour. So once the bread had completely cooled, we just put a lid over the top of the slow cooker, turned it upside down and it slid straight out. Then I sliced it up into the size I wanted. So I cut mine into four and then each quarter I sliced and bagged up separately and I froze some of it and kept some in the cupboard. It freezes really well and it also lasts for at least a week in the cupboard if your children don't eat it first. So for the next dinner I'm going to make chicken tacos in the slow cooker and this is one of the simplest of all. Basically I just got this taco kit from Asda, it comes with the seasoning, the shells and some salsa and it's less than £1.50 and it only worked out about 12 pence extra to buy the kit than it did just to buy the seasoning on its own. So I put 500 grams of chicken breast in the bottom of my slow cooker, don't bother to chop it or anything, add the packet of seasoning that comes in the kit one tin of tomatoes and put the lid on and cook it on low for around five hours. That's literally it. Now you could always add vegetables to this if you wanted to. You could put chopped peppers, onions, mixed beans, but I just wanted it nice and simple. After your five hours, your chicken will be completely cooked through and you can just shred it with two forks. And then I heated up the taco shells that came with the kit in the oven. They take two minutes. And we just served ours with the salsa that comes in the kit and some grated cheese. Again, you could add some salad, some lettuce, some sour cream, but I was keeping it simple and using what I had. And this is one of those really easy meals. Next up, I'm gonna make a really simple puff pastry beef pie with shop-bought pastry because I'm not making my own. So all I did was use 400 grams of beef three peeled and chopped carrots. I used a chopped leek instead of onions because it needed using up, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of dried thyme, and 500 ml of beef stock. I also added in a teaspoon of Marmite and some salt and pepper, probably about a teaspoon of each. If you don't like Marmite and you're one of the hate it community, you don't have to add it but you can't taste the marmite, it just adds a really nice beefy flavour, so I recommend giving it a go. So I just put all my ingredients together in the slow cooker and cooked it on low for around six hours until the beef was really tender and falling apart. And to thicken the sauce after cooking, I just used two tablespoons of corn flour with two tablespoons of water, and it made a lovely thick base for my pie. So I decided to dish mine up into individual bowls. I could have made one big one, but I prefer doing it little like this. I think it looks nicer. So what I did next was got some shop-bought, ready-rolled puff pastry and I just cut round the dishes that I was going to be using and then I just popped it on the top. I preheated my oven and put these in for around 20 minutes. I also did some mashed potato and broccoli to go with it and with the leftover off cuts of the pastry we just rolled it all back together into a ball and then rolled it out and I spread some chocolate spread over it, rolled it up and cut it into like pinwheels and put that in the oven as well. 
So we had Nutella chocolate pinwheels, so it's a good way like not to waste the pastry that you're cutting round. We also did the same with the other sheet of pastry we had, and we spread Marmite on it. Again, sorry if you're a hater. <laughs> we grated cheese over it, rolled that up, and cut that up into pinwheels as well. So they went down really well, and they would be a really good lunchbox filler. So here is the pie all dished up, and we just served it with the mash and broccoli. This went down so well, and I think it's probably one of only two or three pies I've ever kind of made. Not that I actually made it, but you know what I mean. And you could easily put potatoes in this and serve it without the pastry. So it's a really quick and simple way to make a nice tasty beef stew. So my next recipe is a creamy mozzarella pesto chicken and all you need is some chicken breast, a jar of pesto, tin of condensed chicken soup and a ball of mozzarella and that's it. So first off I just put my whole chicken breasts into the bottom of the slow cooker and then I season these with some salt and black pepper. Next I used half a jar of green pesto and I just spread this over the chicken breast and then I opened my tin of soup and poured that over the top as well. I cut up my mozzarella into chunks and laid these over the top and then I just put the lid on and cooked it on low for five hours. After the chicken was completely cooked, I just took it out of the sauce and shredded it between a couple of forks and then put it back in and gave it a good mix through. When it was almost time to dish up, I just boiled some pasta and drained it and then mixed it in with the dish. You could put the pasta into the dish if you wanted to, but pasta is so simple to cook separately and then you can also do it whenever you're ready rather than worrying whether the pasta is cooked in the slow cooker or not. I find it easier in most dishes just to cook the pasta and mix it through. It also gives it a nicer texture I think. So once we had done all of that and mixed everything together, I popped it into some dishes and grated some cheddar cheese on the top and just popped it in the oven for a further 10 minutes till the cheese was nice and bubbly and golden brown. And like I said with all these meals this was super simple to prepare, there was no faffing around, just open some packets, pop them in and off you go. So that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it, maybe you've got some of the ingredients that I used or maybe you can get some in the near future, fingers crossed. Let me know if you try any of the meals, if you do try one of them make sure it's the banana bread, it is amazing and I will be back really soon with another video, I did tell you you'd get sick of me. If you're not already subscribed please go and do so, also hit the little notification bell because I'm going to be uploading more content, not necessarily just Tuesdays and Thursdays so then you'll know it will pop up. There's that annoying lady on YouTube again, right in your inbox. So thank you for watching and I will be back really soon. This is what we waited for.